You got a lot of frets on a guitar, but odds are you're probably not really using all of them equally. If you're a shredder, you probably play above the 12th fret quite a bit. If you're like me, probably not as often. And if you're the Marlboro man, you probably only really play on the first three frets. We call them cowboy cards. It's a, it's a cowboy joke. But no matter what type of guitarist you are, it's pretty likely that you're probably spending more time on the bottom end of the fretboard, you know, frets one through five or one through eight or 10 or whatever, than you are on the top end of the fretboard. So for that reason, I think it's a lot more common for players to want to tune down because you're, you know, playing at the bottom end and thinking like, hey, I wish I had, you know, a lower note than this low E, uh, whereas it's pretty rare that you're like hitting up against that 21st fret on your high E and you're like, man, I wish I could go higher than that. Like seriously, I have helped like 20, 30,000 players out like picking individual gauges for different tunings and stuff. Uh, and I see people wanting to tune down to B or D or C or G or F sharp or E below E, all sorts of crazy stuff. I have over that time had exactly zero people ever want to tune up to F sharp or up to G. Uh, so it's, it's pretty rare. But there are some other reasons why you might want to tune your guitar up. You might be playing in new standard tuning, like we talked about in another video, or maybe you are playing a seven string in what I like to call reverse seven string. We'll get into that later. Where for whatever reason you need a note that's higher than E4, maybe you want to go up to G or A or B or whatever. Now, if you've ever emailed me about this in the past, you've probably heard me tell you that it's a bad idea. And today we're going to talk about why that is. So you see E4s all the time, that's the highest open string on a standard guitar, uh, but the highest you really see in general is like on a 12 string guitar. You see a G4 there, and um, that's the octave note on that third string. So on 12 string guitars, if you're not familiar, you have octave notes on strings three through six. You don't have them on strings two and one. Those are both tuned to unison, and the reason for that is exactly what we're talking about today. If you try to get to an octave B or, God forbid, uh, an E5, like an octave E, that's just not really doable on a guitar uh, at all. The most extreme case I see, like quasi often, uh, is when people do like what I call a reverse seven string. So instead of trying to go with a low B, they try to go with a high A. So that would be an A4. Uh, you see some players doing that, but not, not very successfully. Basically, like you can do it, but you'll only be doing it for like 30 minutes before the string breaks. And that makes sense because honestly, most of the players that I see get away with an A4 are people that are touring and they have a tech and they have like 12 guitars they tour with. So their tech can set up one guitar to have that high A4, they can play it for that song and as long as it lasts for three minutes, then they're good. But you, dear reader, if you want to tune high, probably don't want to have a string that lasts for four minutes and then breaks and you probably don't have a guitar lackey to grab it from you and change it to another string so that you can get right back to it. And you don't want to spend your whole day changing strings every five minutes so that you can play in this tuning. So today we're looking into how high you can reasonably tune a guitar uh, without having a whole bunch of issues. So at first, we're going to talk about why this is an issue and talk about a little bit of the science behind it. Uh, if you're a nerd like me, stick around. If you do not like learning, then uh, there will be a link down in the description below so you can jump to where we're going to actually test out a few different strings and see kind of how high we can tune them uh, before we get there. So if you take a given string of the same material and the same dimensional properties, there I'm talking about like the diameter of the string and the length of the string, so scale length as we look at uh, in a guitar. If you take all those things being the same and then you try to tune up to a higher note, what you're doing is you're increasing the tension on that string. What's tension, Scott? I'll tell you. Tension is an axial pulling force. In layman's terms, kind of what this is doing is it's creating a force that's acting against the string as it's resonating. So instead of the string resonating really, really widely with a wide wavelength, uh, when it has higher tension, that's pulling against it, causing it to uh, have, you know, kind of a shorter wavelength there. Oh, it's not a shorter wavelength, it's a less amplitude of the wavelength. Science, damn it. <sighs> Science. If you're familiar a bit with how waves work, uh, when you have something that's vibrating, you know, in a much more small kind of pattern like that, and I know, I know science folks, I'm not doing uh, the best job there, but I'm doing my best. Um, the frequency is gonna be higher because the string is going up and down a lot more times, where if it's going like this, in the same amount of time, it's going to have a lower frequency. Lower frequency, lower pitch, higher frequency, higher pitch. So this tension is directly related with that pitch. Now the thing is that tension also creates stress on the string, which in a lot of cases can make breakage more likely. 
Now in general, the smaller the diameter of wire, the lower the force to break. So I've got a few uh, numbers from our specs here. So uh, a 12 gauge string, which is 0 0.0120 inches, uh, generally takes 44 to 48 pounds to break. Uh, at the same time, an eight, so 0 0.0080, uh, takes 22 to 24 pounds to break, which is about half that of a 12. So you might be thinking, why not use a 12 to tune to A4 instead of using something like an eight or a nine or something like that. Well, the issue is when you tune a larger diameter string higher, you're putting it under more pounds of tension in order to get to the same note. So an eight, when it's tuned up to A4, is at 20.3 pounds tension, uh, just below its force to break. The force to break we looked at earlier was 22 to 24, and we're at 20.3, so we're kind of like just right up near that. Um, doing a 12 at A4 is gonna put you under 46 pounds tension. I'm old, by the way, so I'm like, adjusting the glasses to, uh, to see my numbers down here. Uh, but that 46 pounds tension is basically right within that 44 to 48 pounds force to break range. Um, so because of that, you know, we're both kind of in, in tricky circumstances trying to get up to A4, but you're gonna be better off with that eight than you are uh, with that 12. Even though the 12 is more durable, you're more in its like force to break range, if that makes some sense. Now, one more side note, and we'll be done with all this like kind of dense, more numerical business. Um, you might be hearing these numbers that I'm spitting out and you might be glazing over, or you might be paying more attention uh, than I think and saying like, all right, we're at 20.3 pounds tension. Our force to break is 22 to 24. So we're like super good to have an eight at a four, right? Well, the issue is that's just like our tension in theory when a note is open. Um, when you bend a string, what you're doing is you're adding more tension. It depends on the string, but you might be able to add even, you know, eight, 10 pounds tension, depending on how high up you're bending it. So even if you're slightly below the force to break uh, at an open note, once you bend a little bit, that string is just gonna pop. Additionally, in most like engineering purposes or anything like that, you're going to want to be like way below the force to break. Uh, with strings, we tend to uh, get a little bit crazier in terms of what we require out of wire. So like, you know, you'll see things where it's only a few pounds below the force to break. Um, generally, you want as much headroom there as possible so that you're not breaking strings whenever you bend. So now that we've explained all of the reasons why it's a bad idea, screw it. Let's take some strings and tune them up really high and see how high we can get before they snap. Now, please know I am not a scientist, nor do I play one on YouTube. Uh, but if you were doing this in a more scientific way, you would want a really, really wide sample size. Uh, today, we're not going to break 70 strings to get a decent sample. We're going to do like two and, uh, and just kind of see what happens there. So, you know. All right, I've got my double safety glasses on just in case uh, this breaks. And by in case, I mean, it's gonna break. We're gonna make it break. So, uh, you know, always wear proper eye protection. So, uh, I've got a 10 here tuned up to E on our second string as a reference pitch. And we're gonna take our first string, which is an eight and a half, and we're gonna tune it up until it breaks. Let's see how high we can get it. Uh, so first up, we'll take it to, let's take it to F sharp. All right, so no real problem at F sharp. We could even bend a little bit and it's not snapping on us. All right, let's take it up to G. All right, so we're there, we're starting to get a little bit tighter. But we can still bend, and we're doing this on the tunematic bridge, so I mean, if anything is gonna uh, break it, it's gonna be that. Let's see if we can get up to A. Oh boy. It's getting tough. I'm trying to go slow. All right, so we are there. It's pretty tight and I'm nervous about bending it. So let's see, we are here at B. Let's see if we can get to C. Whoa, <laughs> it got me. Oh yeah, drawing a little bit of blood. These are uh, the hazards we go through 
to show you what's possible. So we got to be, it probably wasn't long for this world at B, um, and we got just to see uh, before she finally snapped on us. Um, let me see if I can find a Band-Aid, uh, and then we'll try this whole thing with a 7 again. All right, we're back. I've got a seven installed. Let's see if we can get it uh, any higher than the eight and a half or if maybe even it'll give out before that since it's quite a bit weaker of a string. Uh, so same story, I've got it tuned to E. It was tuned to E. And let's see what we can do. Let's start off with F sharp. No problem there. All right, let's take it up to G. Not a problem there. And it's still got a lot of slinkiness. I mean, it is, it's a seven, so it's like angel hair at this point. All right, let's go a little bit higher. Let's see if we can get it to A. Yep, we're already losing it. It might just be coming through the tuning peg back here. Uh, since it's such a small wire, it's hard to really anchor it with the friction around the tuning peg. So we lost a lot, some slipped through. So we're up to A now. And it's not a problem. Let's see if we can get a little bit higher than we did in the last one. Um, B was never really, never doable last time. I think I might have even called it C. Um, but we weren't able to get to B. We got to like B flat. Let's see where we can go. There's B flat. Let's see if we can get to B. Oh, yeah. It didn't get me this time. All right, I only blew, drew blood twice. That's a, that's a success in a video. Uh, so that one didn't quite get any higher. So it's interesting there, right? Like we have a smaller string, which in theory, you know, would be easier to tune up higher, but that curve that we kind of talked about earlier with the force to break um, versus the amount of tension we have to put on it to get it to a certain note kind of causes things to level out a little bit at that point. And that's the reason that I usually uh, recommend to people to try something like an eight and a half or an eight. Uh, if you're trying to go up really high, when you get down to a seven, things can get a little bit wild. And God forbid, if you went with like a six or something, I'd honestly be surprised if you could get it up much above uh, E, really. So what did we learn today? We learned that you shouldn't do this. Uh, don't make yourself bleed at home. And if you do, uh, don't say that I told you to, because I didn't. Uh, but what we really learned is that G is definitely very doable. A was doable in both of our tests. I don't really have a lot of faith in how that would hold up for like 30 minutes or an hour or God, you know, a day of playing. Um, but it's definitely possible. And at least for us, for right now, and for this guitar, uh, it's really not possible to get up much above A. We got to like B flat and that was okay. B was definitely not doable. Um, so, you know, there you have it. If you want to play around with some really high tunings, I'd recommend starting with something like an eight or a eight and a half. Uh, we have sevens too. They can be a little bit frail and finicky. I'm not really a huge fan of them um, for most purposes. But, you know, as always, do what you want. Try things. Do things that are weird. I don't know. Make your guitar play the way that you want it to. That's the goal, right?